What's going on everybody? My name is Mike Montgomery and today I'd like to show you how I built this plywood carved lamp. This project was a ton of fun, so let's get started on Modern Builds. The base is going to be made out of 3 quarter inch pine plywood. And here I'm using the clear plastic globe that I'll be using as a lampshade to figure out how big I need to cut my pieces. I want the length and the width of the final base to be the same size as the diameter of the globe. So I cut this plywood to width on my table saw, then I use my circular saw to cut 3 squares all the same size. And after all my pieces were cut, I could assemble my plywood sandwich. I made sure to spread the glue evenly across the entire face and I used my brad nailer to make sure none of my pieces shifted around while I clamped them up. Make sure and put them only in the corners, that way they're not in the way of your carving. Once the glue dried overnight, I moved to my table saw to trim up my end so that they would be square and clean without all that dried glue on them. After that I got a piece of scrap wood to make a homemade compass to mark out a 7 inch circle. One hole a screw would go into in the center of the block and the other a pencil. Then I could spin that around and use it to mark out a perfect circle that I would be using to carve out my recess. And whenever you're working with hand tools, whether they're powered or not, you want to make sure you have both hands available to hold the tools. So I clamped up the piece in the vise on my workbench. You want to make sure that this is really secure because if this block can move, that makes this whole thing dangerous. If it can't move, you should be pretty safe. And if you don't have a vise like this on your workbench, you can always screw up from the underside or clamp it with wedges as well. To carve this whole thing out, I'm going to be using the ball gouge from Arbortech. It's an awesome 360 degree carving attachment that fits on any standard angle grinder. I hooked it up to a cheap Harbor Freight angle grinder I got. As you can see, I removed the guard. That way I could hold it at this side angle where it cuts smoothest. You may think it would cut really good just straight up and down, but if you use the contour of the ball gouge like I am and really ride that curve, it cuts really smooth without hardly any tear out. I worked from the center out and once I had a decent recess carved out, I just kept putting the globe in and out using a pencil to mark where I needed to cut back so that it would sit flush around the rim. It didn't have to touch everywhere perfectly on the bowl, but as long as it sat nicely on the top, then everything would look right. I used a 120 grit flap disc to refine the shape, then I used an 80 grit, 150, and a 220 grit sanding sponge to smooth out the bowl as much as possible. To finish out the base, I drilled a hole right in the center of the bottom of it for the lamp cord to go through. Then I got my trim router out with a quarter inch straight bit so that I could route a groove on the bottom of it, that way the lamp cord could be hidden. I took this in multiple passes because I didn't want to go too deep and go through the bowl. I sanded everything with 80, 150, and 220 grit sandpaper, then put on three coats of matte polycrylic as a finish. I wanted it to be as low gloss as possible, that way the light wouldn't bounce off the base. So you're going to need a lamp cord with an inline switch, the socket with all of these accessories, and a socket cover, which I'll have linked in the description. Then I'm going to take the washer that comes with the kit along with this little threaded rod and paint it white. Wiring a lamp socket is really simple, you just want to make sure you put your pieces on in the right order, that way everything assembles correctly. On the ends of your wires, you'll want to put a hook that wraps around each of the terminals clockwise. This way, everything holds on really tight and you have a good connection. Then, you insert the screws on the inside of the socket to hold on the back panel and the plastic washer. Then, those same screws attach to the socket cover with that little mounting bracket on the inside. And now that we know how this goes together, it's time to assemble this thing for real. I used a drill bit slightly bigger than the threaded rod that's going to go through this hole right on the bottom of the globe. Make sure you drill this really slow with really, really light pressure so it can't crack. First, you're going to feed the wire through the base, then the threaded rod over that wire. Then you can put the globe on and the socket cover. Once you have the backing plate and the washer for the back of the socket in, you can screw in the wire to each of the terminals and attach that backing plate. With the same screws you attach the socket cover, then you thread that socket cover onto the threaded rod through the bottom of the globe. Once the socket is attached to the globe and sturdy, then you can feed the wire back through the base and hot glue it into that groove. 
Obviously, any light bulb will work, but I think a globe-shaped bulb like the one I used works best. And once that was screwed in, I was done. Overall, I'm really pleased with how this came out. All of those plywood layers scooped out of the center of the base almost look like growth rings of a tree, which is really neat. And all the layers on the edges of the base really tie everything together. So if you guys enjoyed this project, I want to give a big thanks to Arbortech for sponsoring this video. It was a ton of fun getting to use this ball gouge. I'd used the turbo plane in the past on my egg stool that I built a while back and I was really excited to get my hands on this. So I'll have a link down in the description to the ball gouge along with all of the other materials and supplies for this project. Now I don't have one yet, but you could also make this project with a lathe and it would give you a perfectly shaped sphere, but I kind of think the hand carved look that the ball gouge gives is really neat. And of course, if you like hand tools and you're not scared of spending a bunch of time, you could always carve that out. I wanna wish everybody a happy new year. I'm really excited for 2018. I've got some really big projects planned. So make sure if you're new to my channel or if you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel. That way you stay updated when I post new projects. And speaking of projects, I'll have a couple more pop up on the screen right here if you wanna check those out. Thanks to all you guys watching for all the support and I hope you have a great rest of your week. Bye everybody.